Okay, hi everyone. Uh, this is what it will look like when you open up your uh, templates. So this is uh, a little geometric uh, GeoGebra design that I've done to make it easier. Uh, so what do I do? Well, if I go to my tools up here, here's my graphics. So I can drag and look at the basic shape. This is a hexa hexagonal um, based uh, tessellation. This pattern will repeat and completely cover the plane. It's kind of not designed to be anything. If I drag this over here, this is a hexagonal, but this one's different. You'll see that this top has been slid down to be the bottom. This green has slid across to be these light green, and these uh, red ones have slid across to be the pink ones. So if I move one of these dots around, oops, I'm in the, I'm in the, um, notice the tool I'm in here, I'm in the graphics move. I want to go over to the arrow tool, and most of you guys will be using this you're going to move one of these dots and you'll see that the other opposite dot will move with it. So when I go to design my, my dinosaur, my MC Escher lizard, my bird, my whatever, this is how it'll work. This will save you hours and hours and hours. Escher had to go to painstaking with paper and pencil and tracing paper and do this. So pick a design. You'll notice the dark colors are the ones that move. The light colors are the ones that are opposite. So I can drag this one and move it but I can't drag a light pink one and move it, nor can I drag a light green one and move it. It's the dark green one that I have to move. It doesn't make sense that you can't move like both. It's just hard to do it. So um, that's that one. I'll just show you a quick tour of these you can uh, explore on your own. So this shape tessellates. This shape down here has been translated, it's called. This is the math up here. So if I take and go back to my arrow tool, it's the colored ones that move and the dark ones don't. The only ones that will move in this case are the colored ones. These ones all are get moved when the other colored ones move. So I move this one and that one moves. This is a tessellation that'll flip upside down and right side up and then uh, so it'll tessellate differently than the other ones anyway. So I can't drag that but I can drag this. All right. At any rate you're going to try to make a cool shape that looks like something and you can use your imagination. Uh, they're easy birds, easy critters, just put an eyeball in it and it kind of works, but you're going to experiment to make a shape. Notice how this crosses up here, that will not work. You want to make sure that your design doesn't cross, okay? I'm again just going to show you the different options. There's some that are based on triangles, okay? This one is one of those based on a triangle. Again, the color dots are the ones that move, right? So you can explore these on your own, try to make a shape that's cool, all right? So I'm just going to very quickly go up to this one I first started with, and I'm going to try to make a shape and then in real time turn it into an MC Escher creation. So here we go. I'm going to the arrow tool and I'm going to start dragging stuff and making it look like something that I like. Um, I think that if I make some of these here. Here's the eye right here, right there. That's the eye. Here's the nose right here, right there's the nose, thereabouts, and there's the porcupine. There's the front leg, there's the back leg, there's the tail. Okay, so I'm going to try to turn this into my Escher drawing. Here we go. Okay, so here we are looking at my computer. I put the brightness all the way up. I have now put a piece of paper on the screen, and you can just barely see through that, and I have traced my porcupine, all right? Then, if you notice very carefully, you can see that it's based on a hexagon with this part rotating around to there, this part here rotating up to there, and this part here rotating around to there. So this is a hex rotation. So what I've also done then is I've taken a piece of paper and I've put dots that correspond to the corners. These do not move. That is still a hexagon. You see that? The original hexagon and my dots. That's very important. 
that I get the basic template. Because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over to my paper frame and I'm going to put these dots down all over for the first about half to maybe almost two-thirds. I'm going to cover it with dots based on this. You'll see I'll cut it out and I'll lay it out and I'll come back in a sec. Okay, so I've cut out my hexa hexagon shape and you can see that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to center it on my drawing. You might have parallelograms, you might have triangles, but basically I'm just going to center it on my drawing, line it up with one side, and I'm just going to map out. It's easier with parallelograms, so I'm picking a harder one to show you that it can be done. I'm trying to also film at the same time I'm marking, which is not easy. But I'm basically marking out the hexagons like this in equal spacing. And then as I get it centered, not maybe I can make like a center like that, and I could maybe sketch a nice little center line going across. And when I put it right here, right in the center, I'm going to make a dot at the top, make a dot at the bottom, and then make a dot very carefully, very lightly. Don't make big old, old dots right at the corners, all right? Right there. And then I'm going to shift it over. And if I do this very carefully, I'll lay out this hexagon. And you can kind of keep yourself honest. Notice if your dots are getting crooked, this is where um, Nate can help out. And I'm making my hexagon dots like this. And what you're going to get when you do this is you're just going to get a hexagon. dot. See, if I put this now where these dots are, it'll line up, and I can just keep going. So I'm, I'm going pretty fast. And I'm making pretty good progress in just a minute or so. So I'll cut away, and we'll come back, and I'll blade it out. Okay, so I have cut out my porcupine. I put an eyeball on him, and I guess I could put a cute little smile. Oh, it's hard to draw one-handed, and there's the nose right there. Um, and just to show you that it came from here, that's where it is on the screen. I resize my screen to make it about a little bit larger than a golf ball, a little smaller than a tennis ball. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark very carefully where the corners of those hexagons are. You see how it's at the tip of the front foot? Oops, it's hard to see, but it's at the it's at the nose, it's at the tip of the front foot. I'm going to mark those with little arrows. And then I'm going to come over here, and you can see I've got the dots. It's a little bit hard there. The dots that I've laid out really only took me about less than 10 minutes. Okay, I'm just holding, I'm just taking, repeating that pattern with my hexagon, making some dots, moving it over, making some dots. You can see I made this light line here to help keep my dots all in a row. Then I'm going to take, and I'm going to start over here at the very end, about two-thirds of the way along. Right? See that? Two-thirds of the way along. We read from left to right. So the idea is that Escher will progress from left to right, just like he did up here in Metamorphos. See that? See how? We're going from squares here. We're going to do exactly what Escher did with this. We're starting off with squares. The hexagons, in my case, you might have parallelograms or triangles, whatever your shape is. And then it's going to gradually, little piece by little piece, change into your critter. And then, like Escher did in another one of his drawings, we're going to have these critters, when they get fully developed, then break out and walk across the page. Now, what he did is he morphosed them back into... Um, a different shape. He went from squares to hexagons, which is really clever if you look at that. He started with squares, morphed into a shape, the shapes changed, then they went into hexagons. Very mathematical. Right? So I'm going to draw very carefully hexagons over here, and then I'm going to change them little by little to make it into my porcupine, and my porcupine will get up and walk away. All right? Now, if I had more time, maybe I would flip my porcupine and have it go this way, because it kind of looks like he's ready to walk in that direction. But this is a shape that actually spins around upside down and backwards, so I think it's going to do what it's going to do, and it'll be fine. Okay? So you'll see I'm going to trace that out, but very first I'm going to make sure I get the corners where the hexagon is so I know how to align the dots on my porcupine with the dots on my drawing. Thank you. You're running? Yep. The camera's running? Yep. Okay, so you can see there is my porcupine, and I have made arrows that show where the hexagon corners are that fit perfectly with that hexagon right there. Okay, so that's just from the screen. I held it up to the screen, and I very carefully put these arrows on the dots. And you know what? You don't even have to be that perfectly careful because you can just fake it a little bit. But once I've traced the first one about two-thirds of the way along, now all I do is I pivot this around, and you can see that's where the nose is of the other one. And I just am going to, again, line this arrow up with that dot, that arrow up with that dot, that arrow up with that dot. And I'm just going to do the best I can. It's not going to be perfect, but it kind of fudges a little bit. But I'm not going to trace that because it'll show the error. I'm just going to skip that part, 
then I'm going to trace this part down here. And it's come around like that. Then I'm going to trace this little guy's legs like that, and so on. And I'm going to trace, and I'm just going to go to the dots, because the dots are keeping me honest, and go around like this. Then when I get this one done, you're going to see I'm going to pivot this up, and I'm going to get this right there. And then I'm just going to keep going all the way around, and I'm going to trace. I'm going to trace very lightly, about halfway along, and then you'll see what we do from there. Thanks. Okay, here I am just a, about five minutes later. I've traced a few of these. I'm swiveling it around. You can see how I'm going to do the next part. It's a little bit hard sometimes. Like I said, I picked out a harder shape. The rectangles and the parallelograms are easier. This is all swiveling around, but I just need to say, oh yeah, that goes in there. And it isn't perfect. You can see that there's like a little bit of error, but I can get around that by just not tracing that error. I just won't trace that. I'm just going to pick up over here, and then it just is what it is. And then I'm going to work that out. So if, if nothing else, if you get to this stage, you're doing really well. And I've been able to do this in about uh, 20 minutes, so hopefully you can do this in an hour and 40 minutes. But you'll see the idea is that then as I draw these and fill out my page, here I can start with hexagons, right? This will just be a hexagon here. I'll get a ruler and do this. I'm just doing this freehand. And I'm going to start off with hexagons like this, okay? I'm just connecting dots, and you'll use a straight edge. And then, as I get to here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, oh yeah, well that's where I would be connecting my dots like that. And I'm going to make this bulge a little less. And then when I go over and get to the next one, I'll make the bulge a little less and a little less. And by making the bulges and the zigs and the zags a little less, a little less, a little less each time, it'll gradually translate, transform into these flat hexagons. And that's the tricky part, and that's where... Um, you know, maybe uh, the other Mr. Olson can help out a little bit, but you're, if that's the math part of it. If this is uh, like a parabola and it's got a bump, you just do half of that bump and then half of that bump and then half of that bump, and it'll gradually work out. So I'll try to take a final view photo, but you can see I'm making pretty good progress. Good luck, everybody. I'm sorry I can't be here to do it with you. Okay, so here I am just a couple minutes later. I've traced a few more. I'm getting to the stage where I can start doing the progression. You can see... This is going to be like a full hexagon, full hexagon. This is the first little inkling of a transformation. So you can see how it zigs out. I'm just going to go like one eighth of that amount. And then this one, instead of zigging out, I'm just going to go one eighth that amount. And I'm doing this darker. Okay, can you see that? Yeah, like that. And then this bit goes up. So I'm just doing really small zigzags. Bring that point. You just go closer to the line and just connect the dots. This dot connects with that dot. Now I bring that dot closer in. And I'm going to take this dot. I'm going to move it closer to the line. It's all getting closer to the hexagon. So this zigzag then, just you can just fake it. You know, you are not going to be judged perfectly by this. But that little indent just gets smaller. See this tail? This is the tail. That tail is going to go to right there, and it's going to come down like this. So that little tail just gets tiny. That's all we're doing. We're making all these things tiny. Okay, see this bump here? Okay, it's just going to be barely a bump, right? And then each time I draw this, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, and it will gradually transform into my, uh, my porcupine. Okay, so this is right on the line, so there's nothing to transform, but this is the, the, the leg coming out, so I'm just going to make it really small, and then like that. And then I'll erase the lines of the original one. This bump that comes out, again, I just make it really small, a really small triangle. This one that comes out, this is the line, so I'm going to do much, much, much smaller triangle like that. Just imagine it's contracting towards the line. This is the math part of it. Sorry about that, folks. All right, and then I'm going to erase all of these earlier lighter lines and you'll see there's my beginning to be something like a, a porcupine and then each one just gets a little bit bigger a little bit bigger a little bit bigger and then I get a porcupine and then he's gonna just get out and crawl away and I'm gonna try to go on the internet and find a porcupine and sketch that out unfortunately I gotta leave now so I'm gonna leave this to you and good luck